a lot of people say they had a normal childhood. I had quite the opposite. Uh, both of my parents were heavy into, heavy into their addiction. You know, their drug of choice was crack, alcohol. Drugs were okay. Drugs were, you know, the escape mechanism. The first time I tried a substance was alcohol. I was with my brother. I remember taking a shot of Absolute, and I was in that, that cool kid crowd, you know? And, and that feeling was addicting. I started hanging out with all the bad kids, you know, started smoking weed, getting drunk on the weekends. I had people that basically co-signed everything that I did. I didn't know that I was doing bad, in it, so to speak. You know, um, when I was 16 years old, I got my appendix taken out and I tried Percocet for the first time. As prescribed, it said take one. I, of course, took two. That's when I had my aha moment. All the feelings of not fitting in, not being comfortable in my own skin. I just felt like Superman. I started doing Percocet on the streets. I would find it. Everything that was basically bad, I did. I started cutting school, going out drinking every night, and then the crazy thing is, is then I didn't know that they were addicting. I know that's kind of crazy to say, but I didn't know that they were addicting. And, um, you know, taking them habitually every single day, I got dependent on them. Got into a few bad relationships. We would both do them together and, you know, they were getting them prescribed and it just fueled my addiction even more. It just got really expensive, man. I was doing anything and everything to get them. When I was a kid, my, like I said, both my parents were active in addiction. Seeing an ambulance in front of my house, uh, knowing that my mom either overdosed or had alcohol poisoning, or that became the norm to me. The one time, you know, that I came home and I, uh, I assumed that there was an ambulance in front of my house and it was a SWAT truck and um, I go through the front door, I wake up, I guess a stun grenade must have went off and I wake up getting kicked in the chest asking how much money I have on me. My dad was, you know, selling drugs and we were getting raided and they thought I was somebody buying drugs off him. and. Um, after high school, you go to college. I didn't even know what college was. Everything that I got prepared for in life was drugs, you know? I, I just, I thought that was the way of life. My grandma and grandpa raised me, and then they passed away. Then I moved back in with my parents again. It was just free range. I had this freedom to do whatever I want. You know, just getting fucked up, that was, that was my everyday life. After a while, it just, it just became, you know, way too much. Uh, the prices of pills went up. I would have swore I would have never done heroin. Heroin was beneath me, you know. There I was with 10 pill a day habit. Little did I know that was my first treatment center. When I was in that treatment for the first time, it was almost as if the seed was planted. I went to one of those meetings or, you know, and I realized that I wasn't alone in this. You know, did that stop me? Of course not. You know, I went back out there, tried everything. I tried just smoking weed. I tried just drinking or drinking on the weekends or, you know, and whatever happened, it always led me back to doing opiates. At this point in my life, you know, I've been using since I was, you know, 16 years old, been drinking and smoking weed since I'm 13. Here I am 20 years old, uh, didn't graduate high school, dropped out. I remember one year I had like 12 W-2s mailed to me at the end of the year because I just kept quitting jobs. I kept losing jobs or, you know, not being able to show up, constantly being sick, risking my life every single day just to get that next fix. I used to get high just to, you know, because I was upset. Like every single thing, it just came down to getting high. And my best friend passed away. She got into a motorcycle accident. Best friend in the entire world. Relationship of four years ended. Lost my job. I tried overdosing with Xanax and dope, and for some weird reason, I woke up at the, the hospital in Long Island with my sponsor that I really didn't even talk to, but, and by the grace of God, I came out of my fog on a plane to Arizona. I went to treatment for the first time in, in a long-term facility for about four and a half, five months, and ended up relapsing really bad. I went back home because my mom was sick, was 80 pounds, still using on oxygen. I went home and I watched my mom pass away from this disease, and that was always my rationalization. You know, if my mom died, I'll, I'll lose, you know, I'll use or something like that. There's no feeling of, of, of fear, of guilt and shame that you have of, of, you know, using after that. I have people that care about me. You know, I have people that genuinely love me. 
today my dad's sober, you know what I mean? He's coming up on six years and uh, today I could like have a conversation with somebody that I thought like I never, I never thought I could have a conversation with. I could, I could be there for my father and I, and I could be a good son. It's something that you gotta want, but at the same time, like there's people out there that are willing to help you, you know what I mean? Just give yourself a shot. That's all I'd have to say, like go for it. You know, prove, me, prove everybody wrong.